Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to present on uh, capacitive piezoelectric tandem architecture for biomimetic tactile sensing in prosthetic hand. Uh, other co-authors include Oliver Rosioko and Professor Dahia. Uh, so this is the outline of my talk. So first I'll be presenting the motivation, then work done, results and discussion, conclusion and future plan and acknowledgement. Like, okay. So motivation, I need not to motivate anyone because you, if you have already been to the keynote talk, uh, you know like the cool Star Wars stuff which like giving prosthesis a sense of touch. Okay, so without the sense of touch, like prosthesis is just a tool. Okay, so uh, like the, the, it won't become a part of the wearer of, of the prosthesis. With the sense of touch, the prosthesis can become a part of the wearer. Okay, so it's kind of a very exciting uh, work. Okay, so uh, now the inspiration for senses, it comes from our own human body. Where we have our five senses through which we perceive our environment around us. So. Skin is one of tactile sensing is something which is quite underrated and uh, skin is a pretty interesting uh, organ okay in which if we look at it the sense of touch happens like with uh, four comes from four different types of mechanoreceptors okay so uh, if you can look at like you have uh, uh, slow adapters you have fast adapters so Merkel receptors Raffini corpuscles are slow adapters, while Meissner corpuscles and Pacinian corpuscles are fast adapters. Fast adapters helps a lot, like it comes to detecting the slip, okay, and uh, to perceive vibration or texture. While slow adapters plays a big role, uh, like for example, the Merkel receptors, which are on the top, okay, it, it uh, like closer to the epidermis, it kind of uh, plays a role in perceiving the finer details like textures and other things. Well, Raffini corpuscles, which are deeper inside skin, which uh, helps in uh, proprioception as well as like the stretch, any stretching happening in the skin. Normally, uh, the slow adapters responds only uh, like during the continuous stimuli. As long as the stimuli is set, the slow adapters will be uh, like uh, the spikes. Spikes will be from there. It fires continuously. While the fast adapters only during the onset and offset of the stimuli. That will be response, which uh, helps a lot uh, for uh, detecting slip uh, and other. And uh, the the receptors which are on uh, on uh, closer to the epidermis, they have a small receptive field, while uh, deep inside they have a large receptive field. Getting inspiration from nature, we can uh, design a better tactile sensor. Uh, in in the past, we have kind of published a high density tactile sensor. What which I am going to present here is a facile fabrication process. Okay, for uh, which can have both uh, uh, static as well as uh, dynamic tactile sensing capability. So the platform which uh, we uh, have used in our uh, lab for uh, uh, doing this various electronic skin testing is our own custom uh, 3D printed prosthetic hand. Okay, so uh, like you, you can see in the video, the uh, prosthetic hand, uh, it, it's a myoelectric hand. Uh, with wireless control, okay. So with with uh, uh, with muoelectric band, you can control it. So the system diagram is there on the paper, okay. While in the past we have implemented a skin on the palm, which were uh, fed into a neural network. So you can see that as we touch at different places on it, it can uh, sense it. But this is just a, a static tactile sensing the work. Here I am going to present this on dynamic side. This is the block diagram. So it's kind of it has a muoelectric band on the residual limb. Uh, the demo of it, if you can go to University of Glasgow stall here, uh, uh, you can you can have a live demo of this prosthetic hand in action. Okay, uh, yeah. So now what we have done now. So before going into the architecture of that particular tactile sensor, I would like to present conventionally capacity. What are the different types of capacitive tactile sensors? So in all our mobile phones, we have touch screens. In touch screens, we typically have such a configuration, which is a coplanar capacitor, common in touch screens. So it has electrodes. In case of mobile phone, to make it transparent, we have indium tin oxide. Okay, and on the top, we have a glass encapsulation. Okay, so this is uh, this is kind of which we do use in our day-to-day -day life. A very common uh, architecture, which is used on literature, has a skews material in between, and uh, this uh, normally they implement in row column also based on this. There are two electrodes and the squeeze material. 
it's a parallel plate capacitor structure so as the electrode is pressed will be uh, uh, like the capacitance will change which is read out and uh, we can we can detect tactile like the, the the pressure which is applied on it uh, a different architecture where between it's kind of similar structure but instead of a rigid encapsulation we can have a, a, a material here uh, which can uh, which can change the dielectric constant as it is pressed so this particular structure was used for a, a prosthetic hand which in, in this case the electrodes were made of graphene this was published on advanced functional materials while uh, another architecture which is possible is two electrodes with the piezoelectric material so this can uh, like perform to dynamic like uh, uh, tactile stimuli so these are uh, like conventionally the various architecture which are already reported the architecture which we have used for this particular work it per, it, it it's kind of relevant to uh, the distal uh, the index fingers distal phalanx so this is a structure it has a a, a, a bottom electrode uh, with uh, okay so this the electrodes are uh, realized with ito and the interdigitated electrode okay and the floating electrode Okay, having a floating electrode on top has advantage that uh, the the stretching part will be deepened. Okay, so that like if the the stretching part won't come in contact with hard metals in other places. So uh, in terms of reliability, it is better. If you look at it, it has two different structures. We can consider uh, this as a capacitive part, while this is a piezoelectric part. Both are in tandem. Okay, this is the equivalent diagram of it. So if you look at the equivalent diagram, like uh, I'll. I'll explain in the equations as well you can see uh, the capacitance between the signal and the ground csg is in series with cf uh, cgf and csf so you can uh, this is a reciprocal adding equation okay so if we consider that we have here a low modulus elastomer and a high modulus elastomer so low modulus elastomer responds uh, to very small change in a pressure stimuli why high modulus elastomer responds to a very like harder pressure higher pressure range so by having it we can get a sensor which is non linear when i say non linear our human tactile perception is also like non linear it has a very high sensitivity for lower pressure range while very uh, kind of a, a low sensitivity for higher pressure range so it can uh, it, it has a broadband or broad range of tactile uh, sensing perception while Uh, underneath it you have a simple piezoelectric material with a, a bottom electrode so this combine this uh, the the dynamic tactile sensing is measured between uh, the b and g electrode so that's all now that's the sensor architecture how was it fabricated it was fabricated with a very facile uh, fabrication process starts with the design i showed you a uh, design okay and then we use laser ablation patterning of ito sheet to realize the sensor Okay, and uh, we stack first the dynamic tactile sensors. Like here, we have the bottom electrode and this particular interdigitated electrode and the piezoelectric material. The piezoelectric material is a commercial uh, PVDF TRFE film. Uh, first, we stack that film and we do a hot lamination. Okay, and and once this is done, the bottom uh, the dynamic tactile sensor is realized. Okay, then we use a half tube PDMS in 10 is to 1. Okay, and then again, a Ecoflex one is one. This is this will this gives a high density, a high modulus elastomer, while this gives a low modulus elastomer. Then a top ITU electrode is realized, and then finally the structure is oven baked at 80 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. So this is a interface with with the interface electronics. So it's a facile fabrication process. Right now, since we have two different types of sensors, so uh, the sensing we we need to Uh, sense it both for uh, static as well as for dynamic tactile sensing so for static sensing we used uh, this particular setup where the sensor was mounted on it and this is a load cell and this is a pressure motor which has a pressure up to 1 micrometer so uh, with the pressure motor a, a, a static load was applied on the sensor and then uh, the measurement was carried out while for dynamic we used a tira shaker okay so the tira shaker like can uh, have a dynamic stimuli it can, it can induce a dynamic stimuli on the sensor it can go up to uh, 100 200 hertz you know 20 kilohertz actually starting from 1 hertz so uh, in that we have a commercial calibrated force sensor so and the device under test is kept that and the tira shaker like induces stimuli on it with that we can we can uh, test the dynamic uh, stimuli 
Okay. The results of this particular work is presented here. So this is the result of the capacitive part, the capacitive stack. As I said, like uh, the because of the particular architecture considered and the elastomers considered, it it gives a nonlinear uh, response. You can see the the sensitivity of it is quite high at low pressure. Okay, while uh, it's kind of uh, two uh, two percent per kilopascal at high pressure. Okay, so this is this is for the capacitive sensor, and this is the transient characteristics of the same capacitive sensor. You can see uh, like it, it's like it's the, you can see the scale is in second. You can see just like uh, it, it, it's responding to a, a static stimuli. Okay, uh, that's our quasi static stimuli. This is the response of the piezoelectric sensor. So you can see the piezoelectric sensor has quite uh, like uh, this was. Uh, stimulated with a 100 hz signal so this is it, it, the response even though the piezoelectric uh, the stack is on the bottom of the tactile sensor still the response observed is linear okay as given by the uh, equation you can you can consider the equation as well you can see uh, the sensitivity of this was 2.26 per kilopascal so that is uh, that shows that the sensor can respond to both static as well as dynamic stimuli so, to conclude, uh, tactile sensor architecture with dynamic and static sensing capability has been conceptualized. Uh, a facile strategy has been used, so which is uh, easy to fabricate. Now, the, uh, the nonlinear response of capacitive structure is 0.25 per kilopascal at low pressure, while the piezoelectric sensor it has a linear response, the sensitivity of 2.28 per kilopascal. Future work includes like characterizing it for further broader uh, pressure and frequency range. The, the structure can also be used uh, slightly modified to perceive direction dependent tactile sensing. So that is another possibility or in the past we have realized high density arrays using CMOS fabrication. We can include the same concept like in that. We can integrating with other fingers and areas uh, and seamless interface between sensing and feedback. So there are a lot of interesting direction where this work can be extended. So uh, acknowledgement to uh, Vendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group at Glasgow and Electronic Systems Design Center at Glasgow. This is funded by EPSRC Engineering Fellowship for Growth. So their uh, funding is also acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you for listening.